So Paul, I noticed this sitting here on the workbench. I don't know if this is top secret material, a new product or what, but... Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's top secret, so let me zoom in. Right. Let, yeah. me, let me show don't everybody worry. what I'll we're working on here. No, it's not top secret at all. Good. Uh, what you see is what's going to be part of the assembly bench for the new fuel filter. And uh, I've got to go back a ways for the fuel filter thing. Yeah, tell me uh, a little bit about this product. Yeah, you can see obviously that we move a lot of injectors through here. And so as a result of that, we get a lot back in to test over time. And uh, what happens is you start to see patterns. We'll have injectors that have been out in the field for years, yep. and they'll test like just identical to when they left here. And you'll have others that come in that are out there for three months, and you know that they don't have much time and them, hardly any races, and they just look like hell. They're all over the place. The short story is that it always ends up coming down to contamination. Ah, and so okay. uh, because we work closely with Bosch, oh, wait, let me get that on there. <laughs> there we go. Uh, because That's we work to be close proud of. Yeah, <laughs> I yes. Um, we uh, we got a specification for them for the filtering requirements for electronic fuel injectors, uh, and then that gave us a specification to work from. And we grabbed a bunch of filters from uh, just common in the industry, things that people are currently using, have been using, and we sent them to a company in Texas um, whose name I forgot to do some really detailed testing on the filters. And essentially, what they do is they set it up on a bench, they start pumping fluid through it, and then they contaminate that fluid with various particles of different sizes. And now, I don't remember the exact numbers in the test we did, although when we go down to the machine shop, I can get it from Jay, but they put particles in there that are like three microns, seven, 15, right. yeah. 25, 35, and then the end result, what they give you back, is the capture efficiency of the filter for all of those particle sizes. So they'll say, for instance, that uh, with a five micron particle, this filter will catch, say, 87% of the contaminants that come through. Uh, with a 35 micron particle, it will catch, say, 100%. And so the specification that we got was 100% um, capture efficiency at 35 microns and 87% of 5 microns. So of all the filters that we tested in the market, none of them met that specification. So then we started to understand what was going on and see some trends. for a product. Yeah, we started to see things like uh, cars that had relatively stock fuel systems that still had the stock fuel filter in place had injectors that lived much longer and stayed within stock. Of course, makes sense. Yeah, so I know that was kind of a long-winded description, but so we got around to we're going to offer a filter. Well, what a great thing. It'll help protect our injectors. It's a new product for us. But uh, instead of just putting end caps on a tube with an element saying, here's a filter. <laughs> not, not the one that I buy at Pet Boys for five bucks? <laughs> or, or anywhere else in the market. Um, right. We decided if we're going to start from scratch, well, let's figure out everything about a fuel filter that pisses us off, right? Yep. And so um, one of the first things was ease of replacement of the element. And so we wanted this to be a piece of cake. I can't tell you how many times I've been under a car car up on jack stands. Sometimes I'm lucky enough for it to be on a lift. Yeah. And you've got this filter under the car at the bottom of the system. You crack it open to get the element out and you got fuel going everywhere. Everything about that's a pain. So we decided to do a spin on. Uh, it was initially going to be a cartridge that looked like an oil filter. Uh -huh. We couldn't get quite what we needed so we're building, building that canister uh, and then uh, putting a replaceable element in it. And so, right, so once you buy one of these, it'll be actually relatively inexpensive to service. Yes, yeah, relatively inexpensive and relatively easy. You simply spin it on and off like a fuel filter, or I'm sorry, like a, an oil filter. Right. Except hopefully you put this someplace in the car easier to get to <laughs> than your right, normal right. oil filter. But we had a lot of concerns. For instance, if we're going to spin on a fuel filter, what happens if that thing spins off? Those are the kind of things Good point. So over here on this side is a spring-loaded latch. And um, uh, I don't think I thought of it. Yes. Yeah, I don't think I can do it on the cutaway, but That's I can okay. show you down at the machine shop. When you spin this filter on, you'll get a positive click. To take it back off, That's you just brilliant. push the spring loaded lever, spin it back off. You know, you need to patent that for oil filters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit, right? <laughs> so we've got that part taken care of, meaning it's easy to replace and it's safe, but what's the other problem with a fuel system? Well, if it's holding pressure, we need to get rid of the pressure. So there's a Schrader valve on there. You can use the Schrader oh, valve for right one of on. two things. You can either use the Ford style pressure gauge to check fuel pressure on the engine. You can use it to bleed the system down. So this comes with a small plastic fitting and a length of hose and you thread the fitting on and when it engages right at the end, it opens the pintle. Oh, so it's got like a ball type. Yep, all the, well, oh. it, it activates the, opens the Schrader valve. Right, All the Fantastic. fuel drains out. 
uh, so it actually is a no mess solution. Well, for the as most much part. as it can be. A hundred percent, yeah. yeah. yeah to get it's not going to spray me in the face is what I'm saying. Right. Or, yeah, so we hope it's not. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you get my floor dirty. Right. Then, you know. yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we got that part taken care of. We say, okay, it's really easy to replace this. It's a really easy piece to work on, which was important. Then I go back to my other problem with fuel filters. How do I know when to replace it? So good point. let's take your production vehicle for fuel filter or oil filter. They say change your oil filter every 5,000 miles. Change your fuel filter every 30,000 because they've done enough testing to know what's accepted. You don't know that on a race car. You don't know how much shit is in your system from the, the way the plumbing got put together or any of these other details. Yep. And typically people replace a fuel filter either on a schedule, which hopefully goes well, or when they realize they're losing fuel pressure. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many times have you or seen it plugged, at the track? Yeah. Yep. So we wanted to know, is the damn thing plugged? So we built in a differential pressure indicator. So what happens is, on any return style system, the moment you turn the pump on, the system is at full flow. Injectors aren't using any, but the pump is falls out, all the fluid's being recirculated back in the tank. So at that point, with full flow through the filter, you look at the differential pressure indicator, and it tells you how much pressure drop you have across the filter. Very cool. So it can be, say, a half a bar, very few fuel systems are uh, rowdy enough to want to go very far past that. In other words, how many fuel systems have a half a bar reserve or more than a half a bar right. reserve? So whether it be 7 PSI, 4 PSI, you can see it on the indicator and you can and know, you know even before time. it ever happens, wow, this thing's really collecting a lot of crud. I should probably take care of this before the next race or, you know, take care of it right now because i got an extra element in my tool. Very cool. So when is this going to be ready for production? Well, we've, like a lot of things we do, we've moved that a few times <laughs> because we want it to be just right. Right yeah. now we're looking at April 1st, Okay. Uh, although we're still really playing around with anodized colors, things uh -huh. like that. We want to get it right and find an anodizer that we're happy with before we start production so we don't have changes later on. That makes sense. Uh, but that's, that's essentially what we're looking at, April 1st. And there's a few more things about this that I think are unique. Uh, one is that the bracket is modular. It slides into this dovetail and uh, gets seated with set screws. And so we can build a custom bracket to fit a specific application, or we can supply the dimensions of the dovetail so someone uh, can, so do, it somebody can do it themselves. Somebody can do it themselves. Yeah, so right if, on. If you want to have the Speed Academy S2000 uh, fuel system, the you can 2000, make your own yeah. bracket that fits some. We specific, got people for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that fits a specific point in the car. You can put your own label on it if you want and um, uh, make it fit anything. We've got a roll bar mount for like inch and five eighths, inch and three quarter tube, where you can just thread it onto the roll bar. And then this is the one I like the most. And like a lot of things that happen here, uh, it happens because something was pissing me off. Right. <laughs> Here's what pisses me off about putting fuel systems in race cars. I always want fuel pressure and fuel temperature. And uh, it's always a mess to try to find a way to cleanly plumb that into the system. 100%, I do agree with you. Yep. So with this basic filter setup, you've got uh, a dash eight fitting inlet and outlet, just a standard AN fitting, right? Yep. If you decide later that you want fuel pressure and fuel temperature, mm -hmm. you thread the, the fitting out, you bolt on this block, all right? You, okay. thread, you thread your fitting back in, and this block comes with a combination oh, pressure temperature that. sensor, zero to 10 bar, up to 300 degrees F, which is kind of ridiculous. It doesn't need right. to go that high, but it covers the whole range, and it's literally a two bolt exercise and we made it compact, as compact as possible, so that if this was installed in your car and later on you wanted to add this, hopefully you don't have to replumb because you can certainly afford to uh, move that line over an inch, for instance. Yeah. So that covered just about everything that I could think of to uh, make this a product that was easy to use. Something that if I bought it, I wouldn't be angry about it. Yeah. You know, I could put it on and go, wow, well, that's great. What else are these guys? And it definitely have? looks unique. I have not seen a fuel filter such as this on the market. <laughs>